Hey everybody, welcome back to another Faithful Video Devotional. Pastor Brennan here, really excited today to dive into the Word of God together, to continue our study just on the high call to know God. As most of you would be aware by now, but maybe not, maybe you're just tuning in for the first time today. We are well, really now in the middle. We're, we're halfway through our week of prayer and fast as a church family. First week of every month this year, we're going to be praying and fasting, just seeking God together as a church family. We were called to be a praying church, a praying people, a, a fasted church, a fasted people. And so we're diving into this and just in the spirit of this and let this, we're talking about the call to know God. We're talking about the high call uh, Paul talked about in Philippians. We talked about that in the first day to, to know him. Right? There's a difference, again, between knowing about God and knowing God. And, and there's an invitation for every one of us to truly know Him. You know, just as we talked about yesterday, the God of the universe, the God who holds the entire universe together, uh, who created it all, has invited each one of us to know Him. And He's God. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. So He has the capacity, but He's invited us to know Him. But too many of us are satisfied with knowing about Him. Too many of us are satisfied in many ways with living off someone else's relationship with him. And yet the door is wide open where he's saying, I want you to know me. I want you to have relationship with me. I want you to walk with me. And so this week, we're, we're just prayerfully digging into the word and asking God, God, light a fresh fire in our heart to know you. Light a fresh passion in us that we might truly be those who know you. And so... So today, I want to, we, we spent some time in the Psalms yesterday. I actually want to stay in the Psalms. The Psalms are an incredible book when it comes to the topic of really knowing God. And, 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 and it's interesting because the majority of the Psalms, not all of them, but the vast majority of the Psalms were, were wrote by David. And, and he probably, if you, you study the scriptures, David was one of the characters, one of the people in the Bible that had the keenest sense of this passion for God, this passion to know God. The, the Bible actually called him a man who's after God's own heart. And it definitely didn't mean because he was perfect and he never made mistakes because David really messed some things up. But in the middle of it all, what, what shone through was this passion he had to know God. And it, it shone through in the way he lived his life. It shone through in his writings and his Psalms. You can see it all through the Psalms. Uh, just this passion to know God, this passion to cry out to God. Uh, you know, David was the one, if you will remember from the scriptures, he was the one who prioritized bringing the Ark of the Covenant back to the temple. You know, and the Ark of the Covenant represented the presence of God. And, and when he became king, it was one of the first priorities he had. I want to get the Ark of the Covenant back. You know, I mean, there's a whole backstory to that. We won't go there right now. Uh, you know, he also was the one who established the Tabernacle of David. The Tabernacle of David was something that he set up, uh, you know, a tabernacle or a tent where there was ongoing worship and prayer and praise to God, I believe, for 33 years. Uh, forgive me, I just didn't have a chance to reference the exact amount of time, but it was somewhere in that range of time. So this was a man who had a passion for the presence of God. This was a man who had a passion to know God. And so, you know, we, we read some of his heart yesterday in Psalms chapter 8. Today, I want to jump ahead to Psalm 27. And trust me, there's so many different Psalms we could go into. Uh, so even if you read through the Psalms, it with, you know, read through with the, you'll put the glasses on when you're filtering and looking for passion to know God, passion to walk with God. You're going to see it all through the Psalms. But I want to go to one of my favorite Psalms in this regard, and one that's really impacted my life for years today, and it's Psalm 27. And we're going to talk a little bit, about, but I want to do something a little different today too, because remember I said to you, this kind of knowing God and this passion to really know him is, is not just taught, but it's really caught. And part of the way it's caught is by being in places of worship, being in places of prayer, just reading through the scriptures, right? Because in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God, John 1 verse 1. Uh, the scriptures reveal Jesus to us. They reveal God and who he is. And so I want to read through Psalm 27. We're going to talk about a couple things, but, but part of what I want to do today and probably into tomorrow is there's a certain element. I just want you to let these words wash over you. I want you to let, there's, there's an anointing, there's power in this word from God. Not because I'm saying it, because God said it. And, and I want you to not just receive information, but receive an impartation from it. So let me read to you Psalm 27. I'm going to read from the English Standard Version. It says, the Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me, they eat up my flesh. My adversaries and foes, it is they who stumble and fall. Though an army encamps against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise against me, yet I will be confident. 
You know, it's, it's interesting because why could David say that? Why could he say, even though an army encamps against me, I'm not going to be afraid? Because I don't know, that would be scary for me, right? Or uh, even the war rises against me, I'm going to be confident. You know, even the days we're coming into, you know, we, we talked about intimacy with God and then urgency of the times. And it can be a little scary sometimes, even as a believer, looking at kind of the world around us and some of the things that are going on. But yet in the middle of that, God's saying, no, I want you to be completely confident in me. But see, David was, and, and, and why was he confident, right? Why was he confident that his adversaries and foes would stumble and fall, right? Why would he uh, do that? Well, because he talks about the Lord being the strong one in my life, but then he comes into verse four, and I believe he gives a really important key in verse four. He says, one thing I've asked of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. The reason David had confidence in the middle of the battle, in the middle of armies surrounding him, in, in all that was going on, the reason he had confidence was because his priority was seeking God. His priority was dwelling in the house of the Lord all day's life. Now, that's interesting because in the Old Testament context, the temple, the house of God, that was where you would, uh, you know, or the tabernacle, that's where you would meet with God. So whenever you see this symbol is like dwell in the house of the Lord or seeking, you know, th those types of symbols dwell in his house. I want to be in his house. It, it's really symbolic of prioritizing God's presence in your life and prioritizing really knowing God. In other words, when I really know God, I am not afraid. When I really know God, there can be a whole bunch of stuff flying around me, but it's my intimacy, my real relationship with God that, that, that gives me strength and confidence. It's my commitment to this one thing I ask the Lord, this one thing I seek to dwell in his house all the days of life, to, to behold his beauty. See, when my eyes are fixed on him and his beauty, Right? And they don't get distracted and throw up a lot of things. It's when Jesus, when Peter took his eyes off Jesus, started looking at the wind of the waves, he started to sink. Right? And so there's this call to intimacy. There's this call to know him. Now, verse 5, it says, For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me up high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up and my enemies all around me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, be gracious to me and answer me. Watch this, verse 8. I love this part too. It says, you have said, seek my face. My heart says to your face, Lord, do I seek. You know, maybe you've heard people kind of use, it's kind of a churchy saying, but they're like, you know, we want to seek his face and not his hand. Because when you get his face, you also get his hand. And sometimes people are like, what does that mean? Well, hands represents what he can do for you. Face represents who he is, right? Like you ever notice if you're really talking to someone and getting to know them better, right? You're looking at them, right? Good listeners will look at people. But if you're trying to talk to somebody, and honestly, I can be guilty of this sometimes because my mind just goes a million miles a second. And I can be, you know, like when Pastor Sharon and I are talking, you know, and if I'm, if I'm doing this, you know, while we're talking, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. How many know I'm already in trouble, right? I'm already in trouble because she's like, no, I want you to look at me. I want you to, so there's this picture of seeking his face means I'm looking at you. I'm, I'm prioritizing a relationship with you. I'm getting to know you. If it's just his hands, it's like, I want you to do this for me. Do this for me, Lord. Give this to me, Lord. But when I'm looking at his face, I'm seeking him. Right? So that's the language David was talking about here. Now let's keep reading verse nine. Hide not your face from me. Turn not your servant away in anger. O you who have been my help. Cast me not off. Forsake me not. O God of my salvation. For my father and mother have forsaken me, but the Lord will take me in. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. You know, it's interesting. As we're going on this journey in this year, I'm going to just get prophetic for a moment. God's calling us deeper to know him because there's things he wants to teach us. But there's things that God only teaches with those who are seeking his face. Right? If you're just coming to try and get, have him teach you stuff, you, you don't get so far. I mean, he's gracious, he's merciful. So he'll, he still will love on us, but he's looking for people who press into intimacy because there's things he wants to teach us, but there's certain things he will only share with those who are pressing in, not just for what they can get, but to know him. Will we be those people? Because God says, I want to teach you my ways on a new level. I want to teach you my ways in a new dimension. Will we be those? Verse 12 says, give me not up to the will of my adversaries for false witnesses have risen against me and they breathe out violence. 
I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of living. Wait for the Lord and be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Now that's just a great way to finish off this devotional, to finish off this reading. Wait for the Lord. When was the last time you just waited on God? You know, I have a whole teaching I do out of Isaiah uh, where it talks about wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. And there's an element of waiting on God, which means pursuing him, seeking him, ministering to him. But there's also an element of times of just waiting, wait for God. Like we're so busy. Life is going so when are we setting aside that time just to wait on the Lord? When we set aside that time just to sit and listen to him. Right? I really want to encourage you. Let's go for this, guys. Let's dive into this. God is calling us in a fresh way, and he's calling you. Yeah, you right there on the other side of this screen. He is calling you to a deeper place of knowing him. Will you respond to the invitation? Will you be like David where you will prioritize his presence? My prayer is yes. My prayer for me is yes. My prayer for us is yes. And so let that. let's pray right now. Father, in Jesus' name, we come before you today. And Lord, I pray and I ask for just a fresh heart and passion in each one of us. Just like David wrote here, God, that we would seek your face. God, that we could say with our hearts, one thing we've asked of you, Lord, one thing we seek, that we will dwell in your house all the days of our lives, that we will gaze upon your beauty, we'll inquire in your temple. God, that there will be just not a, not we're doing it because we know we're supposed to, but a genuine heart and passion in each one of us for this. And so we, we just, we ask for this. We believe for this. We thank you for this. Do a work in our hearts, God. Help us just to heed that call and answer that call to the high call. In Jesus' name, everyone agreed said, amen. All right, well, we are continuing on our journey, praying, fasting. You can still jump on board with us if you want to. Please subscribe. Please hit like. And if this video ministered to you, please share it with someone. Looking forward to being back with you again tomorrow. We're going to continue to talk about the high call and about just this invitation to know God. See you once again. God bless.